I'm Samantha Eric here with Brian Dunseth for our first ever RSL preview together. We got to do it a little bit in the postseason last year, but fun. now yeah. we are starting it week one, ready to get you guys ready for all of the action. RSL back at it this weekend, mm -hmm. heading to Houston. Before we jump into that matchup, I kind of want to know what your thoughts are on the RSL roster as it stands heading into week one. You know, I was catching a lot of flack. I said the other day that this is the deepest roster in the team's history, and, and, and I do mean that because when you add guys like Everton Louise and Sam Johnson, when you think about the depth and the continued development of the RSL Academy and watching that infrastructure from top to bottom pay dividends, especially in minutes played, game experience, and ultimately a playoff spot last year, um, I think this is a roster that's competitive in each and every spot. And I know that sounds wild because people say, well, what about Nick Romando? What about Kyle Beckerman? You know, what about Albert Rusnak? But the reality is when you look at the way that this team has been built and structured, you have immediate success. You have kind of a three-year plan and you have a five-year plan, which I think at all times you have to be very cognizant about, especially with Major League Soccer. I'm not going to say changing rules, but being nimble <laughs> with right. regards to recognizing that it's not a hard salary cap. It has to be a salary budget. So for me, when I look at what the offseason moves were, the players who have gone out, the players who have come in, um, I truly, truly believe that this is the most competitive, like-for-like -like spot roster that this team has ever built. So you've mentioned the depth, the competitiveness that we're going to see for positions every week, yeah. really. Did they take care of all of their off-season needs, in your opinion? Um, I think there was a couple preemptive strikes, and I thought it started with the acquisition of Nedham um, near the end of the season. So right there you have competition for spots, and we saw that directly impacted with some of the playing time with Justin Glad and Marcelo Silva. Um, Everton Luis, when you think about his background, you think about his playing pedigree, and you think about the experience that he's had heading into this season coming over from City A and Spall, um, I think that's a massive upgrade, and no disrespect to Sonny. Um, the re-signing of Luke Mahol and the re-signing of Tony Beltran, uh, the fact that I think Bofo and Corey Baird, who was the unlikeliest of unlikely rookies to become the MLS Rookie of the Year, and seeing him get his two international appearances for Greg Berhalter at the U.S. Men's National Team, uh, and then ultimately with Sam Johnson up top. You have a proven goal scorer in multiple domestic leagues, a guy who should have no problem settling in to the lifestyle and the culture off the field, which was obviously one of the reasons um, the team had to go out and, and find that point nine once again. Um, but I think in terms of speed, athleticism, intelligence, goal scoring, playmaking ability, and ultimately causing a lot of problems for Mike Pecky in terms of what's the best formation, who's the best starters, what does competition for spots look like, how do you impact games with subs. Um, yeah, I do think they addressed all the questions they had in the offseason. Some very good problems for Mike Pecky yeah. to have all Tough year problems. long. Yes, Tough problems. Yes, big one. So this roster, as you pointed out, all the additions, they also signed a bunch of homegrowns again mm. during the offseason. Justin Portillo, yeah. as of yesterday, being signed from the Monarchs to the first team. So we've got a pretty packed roster. Yeah. Filled with young talent, experienced vets, a little bit of everything. One of the big questions I still have is, will the younger core learn and take those experiences from last mm. year and evolve, continue to move forward as a group. I want to know, in your opinion, when is a fair time to really make that judgment and what are some of the indicators you'd be looking for? It's such a complicated answer because the question um, each and every year, I think, goes deeper and deeper into the season of how do we judge these teams. I think last year, you know, you look at the Houston Dynamo. They start out like wildfire. Um, and then next thing you know, at the end of the season, they miss out on the playoffs, they win an Open Cup, and then they beat LA Galaxy to make sure that RSL has secured their thank spot. You, Houston. Yeah, thank you, Mauro Manotas. <laughs> um, and, and listen, th this, is, this is one of those teams where, to your initial point, Portillo's been the surprise of the preseason for me. Um, whether it's Julian, whether it's Tate, whether it's Eric, um, you know, I, I just think that these kids are going to see what Justin Glad, what Brooks Lennon, what Aaron Herrera, what Bofo Sacero have done, and they're gonna say, I've sat in the stands, I've been in the academy, I've been away at college, I've watched these games on television, I wanna be that person. I wanna, I wanna be Corey Baird, I wanna be an MLS Rookie of the Year, I wanna figure out a way to, to get playing time and get significant minutes. Um, the summer transfer window is always a, a, an interesting dynamic because you have an opportunity as a team to 
I think go out and sign a designated player if your roster and your salary budget affords you the opportunity or a target allocation money type of player or you just want to figure out how to freshen up the squad and um, this is going to be a highly competitive Western Conference. I, I keep saying it's a firefight it, because it's a firefight because there, there's so many similar teams and so many impact players in the West um, but yet so many teams have weaknesses that can be taken advantage of. So. I would say we'd get a good indication of where this team is and the lessons that they've learned last season, especially on the road, somewhere around the end of May. And that's when I think the teams kind of settle in, you get a bit of a rhythm and a better understanding of what your team has or does not have. Well, first test right away this weekend, heading to Houston. Mm -hmm. What is it going to take for RSL to get things started on the right foot and bigger picture, be a stronger team on the road all year long? Um, I think you have to take the lessons learned last season of being close into matches and then maybe chasing the game to a point where you found yourself facing a blowout. And I think through all of the frustration from a fan base, and listen, it's not fun to do a 30 minute post game show, yeah. as you know, asking some, asking some tough questions. questions yeah, where guys are devastated and frustrated. Um, I think all of those experiences early in the season led to some fantastic results and more more genuine understanding of what it takes on the road in knockout round games. Um, so, I mean, Houston provides an interesting test because that front four, whether you're talking about Kyoto, you're talking about Manotas, you're talking about Tomas Martinez, you're talking about Albert Elis, they're so dynamic. But the question for Wilma Cabrera, especially balancing CONCACAF Champions League, and I know we'll talk about that in a second, is how do you find the right fit for a team so early in the season that's about to play their third competitive match yeah. in just 10 days where RSL is going to come in fresh, prepared, and with a really good understanding of what the positive attributes are for the Houston Dynamo. Yeah, so CCL play, Wilmer mm. balancing that with now the first game of the regular season, but yeah. they've played two competitive already, which yeah. puts them a little further along than the other teams in MLS in terms of just being locked in, zoned in, mm. learning how to work together. Yeah. I would have to think, beating Guastatoya now, Demarcus Beasley, one of my all-time favorites, scoring that yeah. <laughs> that stunning, he looked like he was calling was off his everybody. his right foot, too, <laughs> not his left foot. DB Free still e has fast, it. fast, somehow, yeah. getting that away goal, then they come back to Houston. Mm. At one point, we thought it was equalized after, and I think it was the 72nd yeah. minute. Then Wilmer Cabrera had the right subs in mind, brought in Elise Minotas, yeah. they get two, then they got that third, and it was over. It, it was, but it was a calculated risk that paid off. And heading into that final 20 minutes, we weren't sure if it was going to pay off because Tomas Martinez doesn't play a role whatsoever. Uh, Albert Elise is, is held on to the bench until the 60th minute to replace Kyoto. Um, and then Mauro Manotas comes on and, and replaces Peña in the final 15 minutes or so and bags two goals. This team is dynamic, and I still can't figure out how they were so poor away from home last year uh, and missing out on the playoffs. Um, for Wilmer, the benefits are three competitive match or two competitive matches, highly competitive matches right. with everything on the line. Um, the negatives are how does he now go into an MLS weekend? knowing that Tigres at home wow. is going to play, be played just a few days later at BBVA Compass Stadium. And we know how difficult it is to go to Tigres on the, on the backside of that because we, we saw Toronto FC kind of navigate that. No, by the way, Tigres lose 1-0 at Saprissa and, and then they drop five <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. on them at home. So it'll be interesting to see. I have reservations about what we could potentially see as the strongest starting 11 this yeah, weekend from think? Wilmer. I think it'll, it'll have to be some type of mixture with recognition about fatigue, uh, form, impact, and potential for injury to see where this team is right now. But uh, whatever his decision are, is, he will think it's, it, it is most likely the strongest potential lineup he could throw on the field for an MLS home opener with regards to managing the bigger picture of CONCACAF Champions League. It was scary when Elisa Minotas came on. I mean, Dynamic. the game changed yeah. wide open. Immediately. So we'll see what Wilmer throws out this weekend. Denny, last question for you. Yeah. What excites you most about this RSL team heading into the 2019 season? I, I, I know this will it'll sound like I'm sitting on both sides of the fence, but it's the potential. Um, you know, I, I'm watching all these preseason predictions, and it's, 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 it's a bit laughable to me because 
you have so many changes this year, whether it's player personnel, uh, impact designated players leaving or coming, or even managers coming in. Uh, Matias Almeida, Frank De Boer, um, Amarta Santos getting his opportunity in Vancouver, um, who's incredibly successful at the lower levels. Um, I, I say potential because I think with this group of players and looking at the way the roster's been constructed, you could see a lot of different formations. At times, I think you could see three in the back. Other times, I think you could see a 4-2-3-1, a 4-3-3, uh, even a 4-1-4-1. Uh, and as we kind of referred to earlier, I think Mike, Mike's got, got a, this is going to be a really tough season for him in terms of decisions mm -hmm. to make. Um, and do we see a team that is much more mature and intelligent away from home that's willing to grind out results and that a draws good enough a la Portland, which essentially separated them in the race for the Western Conference and making sure that they locked up their spot? Or um, you know, do, do they go in and, and play the same way each and every game? I think the days of, of teams playing the exact formation with the exact players, whether they're home or away, um, I think we're going to see less and less of that as the league continues to grow and develop. Well, I cannot wait for this season fun. to get started. It all begins this Saturday, March 2nd. DJ and Denny will be on the call. I'll be in Texas on the sideline, hopefully not in the same rain that Kenny Neal was dealing with <laughs> <laughs> last night for CONCACAF Champions League. Be sure to tune in. Pre-game show starts at 3.30 p.m. Kickoff is at 4. You can watch on KMYU and the KSL TV app.